So if the purpose of us as women is not known, then you know some people might think that we are objects of rape, or that we are okay you know, as objects, you know, as um, sex objects. So they might think that it's okay that we are only good, you know, to clean the house and to rear the kids, you know. So basically, we're saying that the value of the woman in society must be an equal value of the female person, and that's you know, and um, what we believe. And we do that also by building the capacities of women to equip them to function effectively in an equal playing field. So some people are working on policies, you know, to say change the policy. But I'm saying that, you know, yes, when the policy that change, women have to be equipped to be able to function in those roles. I mean, in politics now, I think it's 50-50 or 60-40, but if women have been conditioned not to be ambitious, you know, or to desire political office, they can say 60-40 till, you know, Jesus comes, you know. <laughs> they're not going to have, you know, 40% women representation because women have not been conditioned to, you know, go for those kind of offices. So it's about the reconditioning. I was at somewhere yesterday and uh, you know, um, I was at um, somewhere yesterday, and um, one of the things we were talking about, you know, um, women not being competitive, you know, and so the so people were addressing me that, you know, women are not competitive, you know, that is masculine. I, I was like, no, women are quite competitive. We just compete for different things, you know. Men are competitive for jobs, and I can, you know. Uh, professional attainment. Women were competitive when it comes to relationship. You know, I get the man, I see the person first off. You know, so we you know, so we, we are competitive, just that you know we've been conditioned to compete in a different way. So we have that energy. You know, I'm saying can we refocus the energy? There's no problem with you know if that's what we want, you know, to compete for relationships, but that there is more to our lives, you know. So we've just been conditioned and taught that this is what it's um, all about. So today we're going to look at different mindsets, how they work, um, dealing with personal limitations, okay? Um, we're going to look at fear, you know, because we're talking about being courageous and one of the main challenges to courage is fear. Once, you know, what we will, we will look at that later. Um, we're looking at the qualities of fear, um, why it's such a, uh, how fear operates. Then we'll look at practical strategies to unsettling personal fears and identifying our self-limiting forces. And uh, we'll look at boldness and identifying and resolving in our conflicts, resetting, uh, resetting personal boundaries. Okay. So that's you know a quick summary of what we hope to achieve today. You know, so basically we're going to look at, you know, what is mindset, you know, and one of the things I say is that it is, I don't know about you, but it is very, very hard to be me, you know, and I know maybe somebody is, you know, is there anybody that 100% of the time you're always you? Is there anybody here that at every point in time you're always you? Is there anybody here like that? No, seriously, I'm asking, you know, because I just... Don't know, but I am really seriously asking that hundred percent of the time, you're always you. Yeah, is that? Because basically something happens. You see, I, I I have a simple definition of what I call stress. I say that stress is when your inner world and your outer world are not the same. When you're saying something else inside and on the outside. You're either saying or doing something else, that is what stress is. That is a pull, when you're pulled on both sides, when your inner world is different from your outer world. And what we're looking at is today is how can we have the courage to be ourselves? How can I make my inner world and my outer world as close? It can't be 100% 
those don't get it wrong. We can never have 100% our inner, because there are some things we think that is just, we're so happy that people can't read our thoughts. <laughs> we're just so happy that nobody can come in there and see what we're thinking or what we're wishing or what we're wanting. You know, so, so there are some inner things that, you know, we don't actually want to happen on the outside. But as much as possible, we're seeing the quality of life, that how to increase our quality of life. I mean, I see so many women, many of us are so physically sick, emotionally sick, most times we think it's just the food or it's um, the weather, it's this. It is what is happening in our inner world. A lot of those sicknesses. One of the things that helped me to change my life many years ago was when I realized the impact that stress has on me. So it's, so it's not about the other person, but it's about me. When I realized that when I get so stressed out, I release toxins, toxic substances into my body. And I'm saying that no other, nobody is worth it. I'm saying that nobody is worth me releasing toxins into my own body. And that's the same thing I'm asking you today. Is it worth it? Or can we develop ourselves to a point where, you know, we're not releasing toxins? into our bodies. So you, you see that the way scientifically, you know, is improving, but the more life is improving, the more sickness is there, you know, because, you know, we, we've come to the uh, consumer age, we've come to social media, we've come to, so, you know, so there's so much challenge and so much demands, and so the stress level of people is so high, we creating new illnesses. Okay, so basically what I'm saying is that it is, a, it is really, really difficult for us as women, you know, any human being, you know, even to be ourselves because, you know, society has given us a picture, this is the good woman, this is the perfect person, you know, and at every point in time we try and be that, so I know that if I say this, oh, they're going to think I'm mean, they're going to think I'm a bad person, so because I don't want you to think that about me, I'm going to suppress myself. I'm saying, what is the cost? of suppression. What price do we pay for that level of suppression? Okay? So a few things which I want to start with is to remind us that change is possible. Alright? Because many times people say, oh this is me, this is my life, this is how it is. First thing I'm going to say to remove from our minds that was set in stone, no, change is possible. Is there anybody here, think about it, 10 years ago, the you that you were 10 years ago, are you the same person today? Are you? No, no, in, in so many ways, I was having a conversation with somebody yesterday, and she was amazed, she was like, oh my God, I can't believe you're the one saying this. Three years ago, you had this conversation with me, your views were completely and totally different with new information, with every new information you get, something changes. So what we're going to look at is how to get the kind of information that we need to move to the next level, to move to where we want to be. What I'm saying is that today is the future you were talking about 10 years ago. You know when you were saying, oh, in the future, in the future, sometime, this is that sometime. This is that sometime. And I'm saying that unless we take charge of the next 10 years, we're going to wake up in 2023, if we all live that long, you know, 2023, and we will have exactly the same result. Okay? I, I love Einstein. He says the definition of insanity is what? Doing the same thing over and over and over and expecting a different result. If we want a different result, we need to change something. So today it's not just, you know, um, everything I say is not going to be for you. I'm just going to say pick what you need. In communication, you're going to only remember 25% of what I'm saying. So my hope is that the 25% you remember is what you need. You don't need the other 75%. That's me just blabbing because I like to talk. You know? <laughs> so I'm just saying the 25% you need. And that's what I pray that when people listen to me, when you know in the middle of all my up and downs and blabs and blabs, you get your 25% from here. What you need to move to the next level. Information is key. Info there is no progress without information. There is no 
you know, there was a time malaria was killing people in Africa. Malaria, just simple malaria, people died of it. Right now, people can prevent malaria. Why? Because we now have information about, you know, what the, what the thing is, what can kill it. It's information. We die when we lack information. Information is key. Two things I started this year believing, I said, look, you know, the two assets that I have this year, my mind and my time. So I'm very careful, very cautious, and I'm saying the same thing to you. What, who do you allow to deposit information into your mind? Because whoever informs you, controls you. So whether it is the state, whether it is an abusive father, it doesn't matter who. Whoever has been the source of your information is the person that is the piper. He plays the tune to which we dance. We are conditioned by the information we Okay. And what I'm saying is, I, I don't know about you, but I go out there and look for information that will move me from one place to the other. So I don't just pick, just willy-nilly any information. I look for the kind of information that I need to move me to where I want to go. Okay? I want you to do a quick exercise and we will come back to it. I want you to, on your sheet, I want you to, any paper you have there, I want you to think of somebody who helped you sometime when you were really down or when you were stuck or when things were not working out. You know, somebody that inspires you or somebody that you particularly like. I want you to think about that person and list the person's attribute. What is it that you like about the person? When you were in a rut, when you were in a bad place, when you were either depressed or something terrible happened, think about the qualities. What qualities did the person have that helped you to come out from the bad place that you were in? Do you understand? Yeah? Yeah? So we will come back to that quality. We will look at that quality when we go through this. But just, you know, just three, four, five lines, you know, of the qualities, you know, that that person may have. where you were in, think about the least helpful person, the person that annoyed you most when you were in that situation. I remember in um, two, three years ago, I lost my sister. She died. She was 46. You know, so there were some very unhelpful help I got. <laughs> it was really unhelpful. I mean, I still remember it. Just, I still remember such help till tomorrow. Very unhelpful. But I want you to think about, you know, the qualities of the kind of person who was on. Just think of somebody. How were they? What did they do? What, you know, what was it that was unhelpful, you know, around that, you know? So, so two, two kinds of people we have down on your sheet. So we want to look at a continuum, yeah? You know, one is a helpful person when things were really bad, you were stuck. You know, they helped you move, come out of that, or they supported you in any way. I don't know, you know, anybody at all, you know. Um, and then the second person is, you know, maybe in that same situation, some, somebody who was very unhelpful, you know, in it. Mindset. What is mindset? So they all connect. You will see at the end of the day how our mindset impacts on our outcome. How this outcome impacts on you know and how we handle fear. So it's about the mindset. That is the seat of where everything happens from. Okay. So here we say that mindset is a set of beliefs or a way of thinking that determines one's behavior, outlook and mental attitude. So it is a set of beliefs. And that's what I'm saying that be very careful the beliefs you have. Because whoever or wherever you're getting information from, that information is what controls you. Some people, their dads are dead, but they are being controlled from the grave by their dead dad, because the dad told them, you'll see this cute girl, 
you're good for nothing. Some people is an ex-husband who is controlling them tomorrow, till tomorrow, yeah? So be careful of the voices, the information, the source of information. Maybe some people is the recession that is controlling us, you know, 15% oh, unemployment rates. You know, so we are all controlled by something, you know, so what information, what are you doing? So it's a set of beliefs that stays in our mind and it begins to impact on our outcome, okay? So we all possess what many people would easily call mindset. We, or every one of us, every one of us. You know, we, we have it. You see, even a little child, a little child has this mindset that if I cry, like five different hands just come upon me at the same time. You know, everywhere is quiet, but the minute I go, yeah, you know, you just hear, you know, like, oh, you know, suddenly activity happens around them, isn't it? So even at that tiny age, they have the mindset that once I open my mouth and scream, and so what happens is that many of us, we actually reward them so much for crying that by the time they become 10, they are expert cries. <laughs> if there's any English word like that. If I create my own, when I can't find it, I just create new words. But they become expert at it because that is what has always worked and got them attention. Okay? So what I'm saying is that the same thing, we have this mindset. See, the life that you have today, this attitude, this behavior that we have today, this that I am today, is what I feel, what you feel best serves you. This is the behavior that has been getting you the results that you want. So my job today is to ask you and remind you that if the results that you are getting is no longer exciting, if you want more, if something on the inside of you is asking that question, isn't there more to life? Then it is time to do what? Shame. Remember, if you don't remember anything today, remember that the definition of insanity is what? Doing the same thing over and over and over, expecting a different result. The first thing, if you go out of here and just knowing that, you know, if I want to, go to, you know, if what I'm getting is not okay, I need to change something, that is where we want to start from, okay? So these mindsets are composed of assumptions, all right? They are composed of assumptions we hold about ourselves and other people. There is an assumption. I love, you know, as you many years ago, I, I, I mean, I, I, I know that's added a lot to my education, you know. And one of the things I learned, you know, going to seminars and things is what assuming, you know. So one of the first things as a counselor they taught us is just don't assume, you know. Somebody says, I'm feeling sad. I'm not going to assume I understand what sad means for you. I'm going to ask you. You know, tell me a little more about it because sad for me might be that I can't find the right pair of shoes. Mm. <laughs> I, I don't mean that. <laughs> but I do like shoes. <laughs> but sad for another person might be I'm depressed. Sad for another person might be, you know, I have no food to eat. So sad means different things. Sad for another person might mean I'm going to kill myself in the next three hours. So never assume, you know, but we all have those assumptions. You know, it says that whenever we assume, assume, A-S-E-I-M, -E you make an ass of you and me. You know, so I always, you know, put that down. I remember that as much as possible. Try not to assume. When people say something, clarify for them, from them, you know, like, so, you know, what exactly do you mean? You know, clarify you know, from them, so they can explain to you, you know, clearly what they But we all have assumptions. For example, we all assume that this chair will be able to hold our weight. So I don't think anybody came here and checked the chair. <laughs> you know, we just came and we confidently sat down. So that's an assumption. It could have been a wonky chair. You know, I could have put it there just to test you on today. <laughs> I could just say, I want to test. I don't want to pay insurance, no way. <laughs> 
those assumptions that we make, but it helps us to function. So there is a part of it that is good. You know, they always say, don't throw away the um, dead seeds. Don't throw away the baby with the bath water. Do you know? So, so there are some good things about assumptions for you. We have to be very careful, you know, because those assumptions, they control us. Okay? So she said that mindset are composed of assumptions we hold about ourselves and of others. And what I'm saying is that even if we are not aware of these assumptions, yeah, they influence our behavior. They, you see, and I, and I just when you listen to me enough, you know that I always say this. I'm not, I always say that you know, if there's anything you remember today, just remember this one. So you know it's my trademark, I always say that. So I'll say it so many times. There's always one thing I say, just remember this, just remember this. But also just remember this, okay? That <laughs> our assumptions influence our behavior. And that's why I'm saying that this behavior we have, this me that you see today, is the assumption that I have made about life is the assumption that I have made about where I want to go. So I have made an assumption, yes, that you are all going to come here expecting to see a professional person. So I try to dress professionally, yes. <laughs> or I could have dressed in a different kind of professional, maybe overalls, and then you guys would think, okay, she's a painter. Do you see? So there is an assumption I've made about you, yeah? We all do that. Yeah? And, and so it has influenced my behavior. So I'm saying that be careful. See, when we want to check, you know, most times we complain, hopefully I will get, I'm looking at this time, so hopefully we'll get to do all of what we have today. But when we look at behavior, our thinking, you know, some of us are thinking people, some of us are acting people. So when we begin to look at our behavior and what controls it is the assumptions that we make that begins to control what we choose, okay? So what I'm saying is that, so even when we don't know about it, it influences our behavior. But the more aware, awareness is key. The more aware we are, I'm telling you. And now I'm not saying because you'll be thinking, oh yeah, she's an expert in all this. No, I still fall, I still make all these mistakes, I still do it. However, when I make them, I don't make them unaware. The minute I make them, I know that's what I've done. Oh, I've just allowed myself to be a mouth. You know, I know. And so I'm able to quickly stop myself, you know, going down that road. All right? So we say that, that mindsets are not cast in stone. They are, they are changeable. They are very fluid. They change, you know. The next thing we say that they're subject to change. But information is what changes our mindset. It doesn't just change on its own, it's the information, you know, that we have, okay? I mean, for, for those of us who are, maybe I should just check, you know, what is our um, religious and affiliation? Any of us Muslim here? Muslims? Um, atheist? Christian? Pentecostal? Catholic? Uh, Anglican? I don't know. <laughs> is there I'm, I'm asking, like, you know, some people just say, I don't know, yeah? Jehovah Witness. Jehovah, thank you. Jehovah Witness. Okay, do you see what I mean? So, you know, there is, um, you know, different um, affiliations. But, you know, I, I love one thing because I, I never, most of the principles I use, I actually get them from the Bible, but I teach them in a way that I'm saying that on the first level that we operate first as humans, you know, for those of you who are Christians, you know that Jesus never went and said, okay, do you like me? Yeah, I'll give you food. Do you like me? I'll give you food. No. He fed every one of them. Okay? Imagine if they did not feed me or if they, if, you know, if they killed me before I became a Christian, then I won't be here today. So the same thing I say that on the number one level that we operate with each other as humans first. So the trainings I do, this one, the four that I'm talking about, is says to us as humans, however, the principles all come, you know, from that. I learn, I get those principles from that, okay? And one of the things, you know, it says, it says, let this mind be in you. So you, you know, it was talking about it, 
He said, let this mind that was in Christ be in you. So in other words, you can reject, you can reject a mind that will set you free. A mind that will empower you, you can reject it. So what it is saying is that you let that mind be in you. You have the choice. I was talking about choice yesterday. I'm like, no, you can't say, you know, I allow you. No, I'm not going to stop you is what you say. Not that I allow. Because the minute I say I allow you, then that means I'm superior. No, you don't allow people because you're not their God. You're not their maker. You, you just say, you know, I'm not going to stop you from doing that. You know, so but what he's saying is that you can let your mind either be this way or that way. The choice is absolutely yours. Okay? So information is what changes the mindset. New perspective, a new way of seeing things, it was changes our mindset. I love the saying that you cannot put new wine in an old wine skin. You know what we have for those of us who come from countries where we used to tap palm wine? You know, we have this thing, they bring it, you know, the palm trees. Oh, it's lovely. I asked her so when I went to Nigeria for the same in December, it was really nice. You know, so it's fresh, you know, you take it from the tree and then they put it in the wine skin. But what it's saying there is that you cannot put new wine in an old wine skin. In other words, if your mind has been conditioned in a kind of way, you can't put a new way of being inside that condition. It will burst because constantly there will be a pool. There will be a pool. You will condemn yourself or something inside you, will, an inner voice will condemn you. And that's why I'm talking about courage to be you. Can you be bold enough to be yourself? Can we? Can I not care all too much? what you think about me. Because ultimately, huge numbers of people are not going to like me. And I'm saying, is that okay? Do you know what I, can I live with that? Do you see? Because if I keep conditioning myself to fit you, then I wake up one day and I don't recognize me anymore. And what has happened to us, many of us as women, we've conditioned for our kids, We've conditioned for our partner, we've conditioned for the government, we've conditioned for the economy, and we wake up one day and you suddenly realize, oh my God, oh, I don't recognize this person. I don't even like her. I don't, yeah, I don't even, I can't even stand to look at her in the mirror. I mean, I, I counsel, I mean, I'm an ICP accredited counsel. I counsel, I've had clients who can't look at themselves in the mirror. It's that good, let me just say that, <laughs> that people can't just, you know, they're just, the inner world is so messed up that I can't stand to look at me in the mirror. So if I don't love me, how can you love me? How can my kids love? Because I reflect my inner world. And for me, it is so important. If you get it right in your inner world, everything around you will change. We are where we are today because of what is happening in our inner world. And I'm saying that is where we start from. Most times nobody prunes a tree. You know, maybe, oh God, and I never did farming, but you know, I'm using all the farming examples. But you know those days, you know, people who farm, if the tree is not green, what do you do? You go, you fertilize, the, you, you know, you go to the roots. You don't go to the, you know, the top of the tree. You can't even climb to the top of the tree. So you go to the root and give it food. And I'm saying that if something in your life is not working, what do we need to do? We need to go to your inner world and see what is conditioning you. What assumptions have you made about life? How are you making the decisions that you're making? Okay? So, I'm going to fly. Why should I change my mindset? I've said that already. Mindset determines behavior. That is one reason why you should change, why I should change my mindset. I don't know about you. So I'm not coming here to tell you what you should do. I'm just telling you what I keep doing every day. You know, so mindset, it determines our behavior.